Hi, I'm Shelley Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts, and I have another mini album tutorial for you. This is an 8x8 with a 4 inch spine wedding album. If you are a beginner, you can make this. The tutorial is three parts, and it is a step by step. So let's take a look at what we'll be making today. This is an 8x8 eight eight with a 4 inch spine. And we've got a lot of beautiful flowers and some butterflies and some bling. Okay, this is a spot to put a photo. place to put picture mats in there. And on this side, I just um, kept this alone so that the bride can put a photo of her and the groom. This folds up. I think you could see that. Places to put photos, whatever. This folds down. This is an area to put a nice size photo in there. And then this folds out. There is a pocket here. And there is a pocket behind the dress. And we do make this dress together, and this whole thing, and it's very simple. Now I haven't finished putting my tags and all the mats that I would want in here. Um, I'll do that later, but I think I got plenty in here to show you. Also, there is a small segment in this uh, tutorial where I show you. Uh, these are actually like folders, and one thing I have not completed was putting the decorative paper on the inside. But I just kind of show you some different things that you can do. If you've got embossing folders, um, I do use embossing folders uh, for these, but these are optional, so I didn't call for them really in the supplies list for this. And this is another one. Because you can do these folders with or without. And here's some more. Over here is a fold out. I haven't completed that. So, little tags you can do. And this is a pocket where you can slide whatever it is you'd like, and then we have a side pocket. Now this page, what this is for is it's just a magnetic flip and it just stores loose mats. And in this case I have a small folder, or actually it's a large folder, that um, I'm able to get photos in. And then another picture mat was done. And this will not fall out because of the side closure. This is just a pretty side pocket. And then we have these two pockets.
and then we come to the last pages and this is actually a half page that we do um, install with a hinge this is magnetic and the purpose is to be able to put more stack more picture mats in here for storage it flips out again and these will clamp shut and here's another nice and then a main photo and behind you can slip in picture mats if you'd like and this is just free floating but it it is magnetic so it will hold it in there the half page is just for pockets or tags whatever you'd like back here too and the final page is just really pretty and mats and then here is another one of those folders and you can see where I used an embossing folder and uh, a stamp and stickles and stuff and the bows but I haven't completed the inside okay let's go ahead and move on to our materials list So let's go over the materials list for the wedding album. Um, before we get started, I do want to say that when I designed this, I designed it to how I would like to have a wedding album made. So I really did put a lot of supplies into it. And I think that the best thing for you to do is write down all the supplies I used, then check your own stash to see what you have that maybe it's the same or close maybe it's different you would like to use um, you definitely don't have to use everything I did um, and I do like to bring back dies that I used in previous tutorials so that we can you know use them again and I did do that in this tutorial as well as bring in a couple new things so uh, first thing you're gonna want is I have two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight uh, chipboard and it's black and we will be wrapping the edges. You will want the paper and the paper is by first edition it's the 12 by 12 The Promise and it is gorgeous. It really is. It, it offers a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's kind of kind of flip through and I'm not sure how well the camera is picking up the true colors of this but uh, that's what I chose and when I found this I got really excited because all these ideas came to mind and it's pretty versatile to where you can add if you have a wedding to do maybe blue flowers purple yellow it's all gonna go so okay to wrap the edges of the 8x8 covers I am using two pieces of 12x12 12 12 white cardstock. Um, I am using the, and that came out of the coordinations, uh, 12 by 12 great white. You only need two sheets of that. Um, the rest, what I used was um, the DBS uh, 65 pound value pack, 50 sheets are in here. Um, I recommend using a value pack whether it be coordinations, whether it be some other brand, but um, get the value pack because we do use a lot of white cardstock in this. Dies that I used, and you, you may be familiar, you probably may already have these. Uh, the Heartfelt Creations Regal Borders and Pockets die, and the number on that is an HCD1779. And I also use the Heartfelt Creations Ornate Borders and Pockets die, and that's an HCD1 780. I think they're just, they're gorgeous, so I brought those back. Uh, new dies that I incorporated into this was the Spellbinders. This one is called Timeless Rectangles. It's an S5-158. Uh, this one is called Gold Majesty um, Circles, S4-409, and this is absolutely gorgeous. 
and you get several plates in this. Oh, how pretty is that? And then you get your inner circles and and whatnot in there. And that was used. Now, I did use from the Heartfelt Creations, and this is new out. It's the Berry Blossoms die, and it's an HCD1-793. And you get all of these cutouts, the flowers and the vines and whatnot there. Uh, most of my roses I, I did not stamp with the Berry Blossoms matching stamp set, but you might want to get that because I did stamp a few flowers on the inside. Um, but you may want to use this for my next tutorial because I will be using this again. And this is the stamp, it's the HCPC 3731. And you just get the flowered stamps and you get some um, of the uh, stamps for the side things. And I did use that in this tutorial so um, you'll probably want to pick that up. Also used in this were, and I'm going to show you really quick, this is a Martha Stewart and this is like the Monarch Butterfly. It's the larger punch. It's heavy duty. For my flower shaping, if you don't already have a kit, the Heartfelt Creations Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit. I like this one, the Deluxe. It's it's a larger kit. You do get a large mat. You get the smaller mat. You get the stylus with a lot of different tips in here. And it's everything you need to create flowers. Prills. I use this um, only uh, on some flowers on the inside where I had stamped and then die cut. Uh, Prills was used in the middle. And it's, it's totally up to you. If you're not die cutting um, using the Regal Borders or the Ornate Border die uh, sets, uh, you can al always use the Martha Stewart Deep Edge Punch. You'll just have to adjust a little bit for the um, size of the designer paper that we lay down on the pocket. I almost forgot, for the spine, I am using this specialty paper. And I'll bring it up. I'm not sure if you can see the texture in there. This is Peacock White, and it's an 8.5 by 11 sheet, and it's pretty durable. And this is what I use to wrap the spine um, on the album. And then, of course, before I get too far, you're going to want a Tyvek. Tyvek is a very strong material. It's what we use for to bind the cover to the spine. Um, you just need to, like I'll be using just this strip and dividing it in half using what I got. So um, you'll need that. Um, I did use these uh, because the paper does not have the the, the panels or the, um, sentiments or whatever. I did use this. This is by Paper House and this is the wedding collection. Now they are die cuts and I'm going to bring these out. You get two of each. There's 36 pieces in here and they are adhesive. Now most of you know that I like to have thicker uh, things and I will be backing all these. But you'll get like for instance this in there you'll get a couple of these just a variety of neat things um, that we can uh, use to um, accent embellish our inner pages there's just a ton of things in here um, so I did use that this is Prima's and it's the shabby chic treasures and it is the oval um, it's a two-pack and um, what I did was I went down to my craft store and picked up, and it's not that much money, it's very inexpensive, but a silver paint. And this is a silver metallic paint. I don't carry it in my store, but I did one coat on these, and that's all you need. And that is for our cover. 
if you are not die cutting your flowers, um, there are so many different flower packs that you could use with this. These are the Kaiser Craft Paper Blooms, uh, but Prima Carries, Petaloo. Um, if you're unsure or you know what what you really want to uh, use, you can always visit my website and just click on the flower icon and visit each of the different manufacturers to see something that you might like or dig in your craft drawer because you know we all have a bunch of flowers that we've purchased leftovers that can be used um, matter of fact you probably if you've taken previous tutorials have these um, I will be die cutting and inking up my own flowers throughout this tutorial okay accenting of my butterflies and flowers I used uh, two types of stickles one is the silver and one is the diamond I also used Wink of Stella, the clear, and I also used Glossy Accents. Inks I used for my leaves. Um, some of you are very familiar. You probably already have this. I've used this in so many tutorials. Uh, pistachio, it's, uh, it's a greenish color. It's by Memento. And Pear Tart. I also used a little bit of summer sky and I did use uh, and it's a silver metallic I'm using this from my stash um, I am getting in some color box uh, silver metallic this is a silver metallic this is almost out so I'm going to use what I have first before I go and buy uh, the other for the side closure on our album, I am using the Dritz Extra Large Hook and Eyes. There's three sets in here, so you'll have enough for three albums. Um, this is the nickel. I'm also using these, and this is something new that I just brought into my store, or bringing it in. It may not be there quite yet, but this is by Jolie's Boutique, and they are really beautiful. Um, a pearl and gem clusters and they are metal on the back for the uh, spine I use the Tim Holtz bar cube frames there's two in a pack so we do need you one. want several flat back pearls and I'm going to use what I have on hand mostly what I will be using is stuff that I have in my store um, so uh, half inch a quarter inch uh, 360 whatever uh, I can um, use in my album now I use magnets and these are the 3 8 they're very strong craft magnets or I have a customer or actually she uh, watches my tutorials who mentioned to me that she heard that um, watch something with Emma Lou from heartfelt Creations saying that you can make these go farther by using a washer, a metal washer, as the mate. You'll want some of the 3D uh, pop-up squares. Now, ribbon. Ribbon is all according to taste. I am digging in my stash drawer. <laughs> um, I've bought some of this down at Michael's or Joanne's Craft Store over time, but I am going to use some of this. I'm using some ribbon. It makes no difference how wide or thin you use. Just use whatever you want or whatever you have on hand. And then there's the regular white satin. And then I'm going to be using some of this. And as you can tell, it's kind of like an organza. You can see through it, but it has silver Pearl on it. Pearl trim. I'm using white and you will one yard will be plenty. I'm also using bling on a roll. This is the single roll. And what it it's for trim and it, it just makes things just so pretty on any project, but that's what it looks like. And you'll have gobs of this left over. I'm also using some of these, and they're like a satin flower, ribbon flower with the little uh, rhinestone in there in the middle. I'm not sure if you can see that rhinestone. Bring that up. They're really pretty. I'm using a pack of those. I think there's 12 in a pack. 
And these are the really nice ones. They're quite lovely. Lace. Now I used a lot of lace here and um, I did just bring this in. And this is about three inches wide. It's very pretty. It has sequins and little pearls um, sewn onto it. And this is a two inch and it's beaded sequin type of lace. I just thought this was just gorgeous. I am using a half inch and it's a thinner white. I have the thin three quarter inch one and that is thin as well. And I have the one and three quarter uh, Venice lace and this is white. It is a little thready up here like you find on some of the Martha Stewart laces and other nice laces. but. Uh, some people leave it right on me. I'm more persnickety. I do trim off anything that's thready. Now I also used the Prima Memory Hardware Trim. It's the Petite Rosettes in this. And uh, one thing about the flowers I just want to say really quick. I did use some dried baby's breath and you can get that down at Michael's or Joann's. It's just filler and it's not necessary but if you have some you might want to use a little bit. Adhesives. Um, I am using score tape. It is the quarter inch wide and you will want a, a roll and a half for this particular one. We have it's an 8 by 8 so we're using more. Two would actually be the best for this album. And um, let's see what else. Um, most importantly, I do use um, this glue. I know it's filthy looking, but uh, uh, these bottles are refillable, so I do uh, keep the same bottle for a long time. This is Art Glitter Designer Glue. It dries clear. There's no glitter in it. That's just the brand name. It's good for metal, resin, plastics, paper, you name it and then also you'd want to get the metal tip to control the flow because you don't need a whole lot of that. In this project you will want a pencil, eraser, a ruler, a score pal, scissors, and you may want your hot glue gun for quick tacking of certain things, flowers or, um, or wraparounds. You will probably also need, well, you'll need your paper cutter because we'll want to make accurate cuts. Okay, something else that you're going to want to do, and you're going to want to put your 8.5 by 11 um, white cardstock into your printer, and you're going to need a computer. You are going to uh, spell out our wedding because that is for our cover, and the font I used is, I think it's Lucida calligraphy and the size is 28. And to show you what that would look like and that made a perfect once we arrange it, perfect size. Another thing and this is absolutely optional I am using some of this. I use the same font and size but I typed out a sheet and you might want to pause the video and write down what I did here. We will be using our dies to die cut those out. And then there was one more wedding party. Those are some suggestions if you want to do your wedding album like that. Um, you can. Let's go ahead and start by building our album. On both of these 12 by 12 chipboard pieces, you are going to measure over 8 inches and cut. This is what you should have so far. Now on three of these, on this one, this one, and this one, you are going to measure over 8 inches and cut all of those. 
What we need out of this are our 8x8 covers. You will also have a 4 inch by 8 inch spine piece. Put these off into a pile for another project. We are done with these. We're going to wrap the edges and grab two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. You're going to cut these down to 10 inches by 10 inches. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and set this off to the side. Grab a piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock and you are going to cut this to a 6 inch by 10 inch piece. So you will measure over uh, 10 inches this way, cut it, and then you'll cut it by uh, the 6 inches. Before we go any farther, you are going to want to make a pile for reserved leftover scraps of your cardstock. Um, and you will also have a pile for our uh, the promise paper pad. Any scraps you will keep. Even if it's a sliver of a piece, please keep everything until the project is complete because I do use scraps so that it maximizes our uh, paper and we use it to the best uh, of our ability. So there's not a lot of waste. Okay, you're going to do this on each one of your pieces. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is lay these out as well as this one. You're going to center this. Now this is the easiest way I know to wrap it and have it look good. You're not going to use any adhesives just yet. All we're going to do is center this. You're going to have an inch on each side going around. And once you think you're pretty centered there, all you're going to do is hold this down and you're going to make a crease on each side, keeping it in place. like so. So let's do that on all of our pieces. Go ahead and grab your scissors. Now you can remove this. You will see where all your folds are. This little corner piece, we are going to cut that out on each one. Whoops, I'm stuck. And you're just going to go around and do this on all corners. And you're going to do it for the other pieces too. Okay. I've got mine all notched out on even the spine piece, everything. Now I want to point out that there are so many ways um, people uh, wrap their edges. This is just one way that I like to do. Um, okay, we are going to put our adhesive on one side of our chipboard as well as on here. So let's get our score tape out. And you will do this on each one of your pieces. Let's go ahead and start with this. We're going to run score tape around the perimeter of this to start. Next, we're going to put several strips down in here. Now this is going to be, um, when it's down like this, this is going to be my cover, so I am going to use a little more score tape on this one um, than I normally would on the back because we don't know, we don't have heavy weight on the back. So um, also one thing you're going to want to do is put an extra strip on each side, and the reason is is because our dritz, when this is down and we have our paper, we do place one of the pieces of the dritz, our closure, here. And when we glue that down, we don't want our paper, paper to buckle up. And you don't have to be precise about measurement in between um, the score tape that I'm about ready to place. Just eyeball it. This is a lot of score tape, but it ensures that nothing's going to buckle up. Grab your pencil so you know which one's your cover and which one's going to be the back. And just go ahead and write cover on that so we know. 
we'll set that one off to the side. Here is our back and let's go ahead and start by putting the score tape around the outside and we'll start with one down the middle. I'm going to run an extra piece down here and in case I get turned around on how I do this, I'm going to place one there, one here, one here, and then what I can do for this is put a squiggly line of whoops, of glue. I need to refill my bottle. I'm about out. Just like that, just run a squiggly line right down here. There are the refill, the 8 ounce refill bottles for this. You always hang on to this and you just refill it. And it's so much cheaper to get this refill than buying bottle after bottle. And I am about out here, so. And it really saves on money. So we're going to start really quick because the glue is still wet. If you have a craft knife, it makes things much easier to get the score tape up. Remove our score tape. And you place it face down, right in those grooves where it's supposed to be. Set that one off to the side. Oh, also one thing is, is because we're working with white and it is a wedding album, you might want to make sure your area is clean. Let's go ahead and place this one. We're going to remove all the score tape and do exactly what we just did is by placing that down. That one's down. Let's go ahead and work on this one. Score tape around the perimeter, one down the middle and two on either side. We'll remove the score tape and place it down. This is what mine looks like. I'm going to remove the score tape now and do as I previously said. Place that down. Okay, mine is down. Let's grab our score tape. And we're just going to place a strip here and a strip right here. So two strips along each side, like so. And we're going to do that on this as well. Okay. <clears throat> now, on two sides that are opposite each other, you are going to snip off at an angle, as you can see, and leave just a little bit left over on that side. And this, it's like a little notch there. And I'm going to flip this around, and I'm going to do the same thing. Your angle does not matter how deep or how, how much of a degree you're at. So once you get two sides, you're going to leave the other two alone. And on, you're going to repeat that for the cover. Now on the spine, what you're going to do is the two shorter ones, this one and this one, you're going to do the same thing. It's just snip on either side. So let's go ahead and finish up snipping on our other one. Let's go ahead and start. You're going to remove the score tape off the sides that are, were left alone. And this is so easy. Just remove your score tape, if I can. <laughs> there we go. And you're just going to press it over. At this point, if you were going a little bit over off to the side, whoops, squeaky scissors. You can go ahead and get your scissors in there and snip, like for mine, as you can see, it kind of overhangs the edge of uh, the chipboard. I'm just going to snip that so that it's straight. 
in case I wasn't real clear, you don't understand what I'm talking about, right in through here. So that it will lay straight across. And I'm okay up there. And this is my cover. And all I'm going to do is just make sure that it's even. I'm going to push up. It's sometimes easier to push up in the middle and then spread it out that way. And we'll do this side together. And we're going to do that with all of these. Now all your pieces should be nice, uh, nicely wrapped. Let's go ahead and lay it out. My cover is on the left. And I'm going to show you really quickly how this is going to work when we get the Tyvek and our strips and everything. We are going to be pushing this all the way together, laying our Tyvek strips over here. We do have a cover for that and then we also have a cover for the inner spine. So let's get started. Let's grab our tie back. Cut two pieces of tie back that is one and a half inches wide by seven and a quarter inches long. Once you've done that, place each one on your scoreboard and at three quarters of an inch, you're going to score that right down the middle on each. And then we're going to fold on our creases. Okay. With the seam up, you're going to grab your score tape and you're going to lay just on the, you're not going to get it on your scoring mark at all. So my first piece I'm going to lay is just to the right of that score line. And I'm going to lay a second piece on the right hand edge. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to be to the left of the score line, making sure I don't get any score tape on it, and then to the left edge. And we're going to do this on both of them. It is very important that once you lay your score tape that you flip it over and if you can see any score tape peeking out the sides that you trim it. So let's do that for this one. Remove one side of your score tape and we are just going to pinch that right in half. Now, the crease is going to face um, out. So this is the spine. I'm going to turn this so it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. But I'm just going to eyeball this. Now I am going to be farther down on the right than I am at the top. The top is the top of our album. We have a little more headroom up there on this design. So measure up approximately a quarter inch from this and place your first one. Now when you place this, you're going to place it so that the crease lines up with the side. And you're going to keep that as straight as you can all the way up. Then you can just flip that and smooth it out. If you get any crinkles, do not worry. Try to smooth them out. We will be covering these and then we have a spine cover. This is my back cover and I am going to place this right up against there. I'm going to remove this side of the score tape. This is very simple. Whoops, I moved. That's okay, we're just gonna... 
push this right on back so that we're even at the top and we are even at the bottom and you're going to keep them pressed flush together and you're just going to push this over. I like to start with the middle and then I just smooth it out. We're going to repeat that for this side and we, the thing is about this is you're not going to want to go any lower than you did here. You want to try to keep them straight. I'm going to remove the score tape on one side and I'll do this so you can visually see what I'm up to here. Now the, the crease is going to face this way and I'm going to be very careful trying to keep the same as what I did down there. I'm just going to bring that right on up. I'm going to remove the score tape on this side. I'm going to grab my cover. I'm going to push these together, keeping them as even as possible. Push in the middle and smooth it out. Now you should have a couple pieces here. Um, what you're going to want to do, and I just pulled these out of the reserves cut. What you're going to want to do is cut these to two inches wide by seven and a half inches long. So let's do that. Let's grab our scoreboard. We're going to score these each at one inches. And then we're going to fold on our score lines. This is the same thing we just did like the Tybeck. The only exception is that we're going to lay three pieces of score tape on either side. And I already got one done, and we're going to do the other one exactly the same. I've got both mine done. I removed score tape off one side. I'm going to move my album over here. I'm going to fold this back so it's easier for me to see. I am going to line this bottom edge up with the bottom of this, of the um, Tyvek. So let's go ahead and place that. right on the edge and you will notice that this strip is slightly longer than this and that's okay that's the way I do these sometimes because it the Tyvek is what's going to hold this hinge on there and I'm just going to do the same thing as I did on the Tyvek remove that push it first in the middle and then smooth it out so we're going to go ahead and repeat that for this side, making sure that the crease faces this way and we line that up. Here we go. Now if you get a little off, that's okay. There is an opportunity to straighten that up here in a moment. This is what yours should look like. Grab a piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock, and that is the size I will be using throughout this tutorial now. We're just going to measure over 3 and 7 eighths of an inch and cut that. The larger piece goes in our reserves. Now we're just going to measure over 7 and a half inches and cut that. This piece should fit nicely in between our creases here. Now this is where I said if you got one a little lower than the other um, this might help you to straighten up. And just double check yourself. Mine's going to fit perfectly. I did it slightly less than the size of our spine. Our spine is four, to four inches across. Okay, because this is going to have the hinges attached to it, we do put a little more score tape on this. So I am going to put score tape around the perimeter 
and I'm going to start with one down the middle. Next I'm going to lay several strips on either side. Then I'll show you what mine looks like. This is what mine looks like. Now I'm going to remove the score tape and I'm going to line this up the top with the top of these white uh, hinge covers and I'm going to center that and I'm going to place that down. Now remember don't get on your creases because then what's going to happen is you're going to buckle at the crease. So let's do that. Let's do this step by step so we stay together on this. Grab six pieces of eight and a half by eleven white cardstock, and I'm going to triple mine up to cut mine on my cutter. If yours only handles two at a time, that's fine. Uh, what we are going to want to do is we're going to measure over uh, seven and a half inches on each, and we're going to cut it. So let's start there. Okay, all of mine are seven and a half inches wide, and I still have eight and a half inches here. So now we're going to cut these down to seven and three quarters of an inch. Our final sheets, all six, are going to be seven and three quarters by seven and a half. Grab one more sheet of the cardstock, cut it down to five inches by seven and a half. Grab your scoreboard on and we are seven and three quarters of an inch across and you are going to score each one at a half inch. All of them including this one and it's five inches wide, score at a half inch. So let's do that with all of these. Now you're going to fold, of course, on all of your score marks. And then with the valley facing up, or not the valley, but the peak, the seam facing up, we're going to lay our score tape. And you're not going to get it on the hinge whatsoever. You are just going to go to the right of the score line, not hinge. And we're going to run score tape right on that side. And I am going to overlap mine to get to the edge. And it won't hurt nothing. And you're going to do that with all of these. This is a different hinging style than um, my earlier tutorials. I thought I would introduce it. Um, you will have seen this type of hinge style in some of the Heartfelt Creations um, 3D Flip and Fold albums. And it's a really simple one. Okay, I've got mine all on. The first thing that we want to do is flip these over and if you can see any score tape peeking off to the side or the edges, they have to be snipped off. So clean yours up if needed. This one is going to be, the short one, is going to be placed last. Let's grab our album. I'm going to get mine all ready to go here. And we're going to do this together, of course. I'm going to set these off to the side. And this is very simple. Um, I did overlap mine, and I'm going to take the score tape off the bottom one first. And the reason why is if you just hold it like that and peel it off, less chances for any waves or buckling. Okay, so the first one. And all I'm going to do is, I got this sticky thing, I'm going to flip it over like this. I'm going to line this up with the side of that middle spine uh, piece that we did, top to bottom. This will keep you straight. 
So I'm going to line up the top and the side here first at, up here. I'm going to press it down so that will give me more control over the next piece. And once I got that down, and that is on. I'm going to grab my next one. And I'm going to take off the bottom one first. It does help. It's not necessary, but I did find that, that doing it that way does kind of keep any buckling up of the tape. Okay, the next one. Here we go. And I hope my head does not get in thing. I am just going to push this right up against the edge of this on the paper, of course, and lining it up. So I'm going to do the top one first, and then here comes the bottom. And then the next. One thing you might want to remember to do throughout the tutorial is frequently wash your hands with soap and water. We got oils on the tip of our skin and um, also whenever I'm doing wedding albums I do not wear any lotion. Um, I've had more smudges doing them that then I'm having to try and, and uh, cover up a, a smudge. So, okay. Here we go, the top, the bottom. And last but not least, our short page. And you should have a nice looking even album. In your paper pack, the very last sheet, you will find this. This is a double-sided. Uh, most of the papers in this collection are single-sided, but they give you textured paper, double-sided, and uh, single-sided in this collection. Um, the back has this on it. So I have the stripes going up and down. I'm going to measure over 7 inches and cut it. This side goes in our reserve pile. We're going to measure on over seven and seven eighths of an inch and cut it. You'll put the smaller piece in your reserves. I'm going to bring the album here. This is the front cover and I want to prop this up so I need to find something. Something that will prop it up. There we go. And here we are. Now, you are going to have about a sixteenth of an inch of white showing of cardstock at the top and the bottom, and you'll want about the same on the right hand side. We do have a wrap to go over the spine that will take care of this. So let's apply our score tape to the back. We're going to go around the perimeter and we are going to put uh, another row right next to over here. One down the middle and two shorter ones on either side. And I will show you what that looks like. Now one thing you can do 
is put a little bit of your glue, just a squiggly line down here. Real fine line is all you need. We're going to remove the score tape and we're going to put it on the cover of our album. So I'm going to remove the score tape and I will show you that. And I hope my head does not get in the way here. But I'm just going to place this evenly. Smooth that all down. Let's grab that same sheet of paper out of our paper pack and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did here. We're going to measure over 7 inches and cut it, then we will cut that by 7 and 7 eighths of an inch. We're going to do the same, we're going to flip that on over, same thing with the score tape, and then we are going to place it on the back of our album. So let's do that. Okay, I've got the back of my album here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm trying to keep this as straight as possible. Let's go ahead and grab our peacock white paper. And the first thing that we're going to do is measure over 8 and 1 eighth of an inch and cut it. This goes in our reserve, so we are 8 and 1 eighth of an inch across. This is 8 and a half inches. We need to measure over to 8 inches and cut that. Let's grab our Martha Stewart half inch punch. Now make sure that you have this going the right way. This should be eight inches tall, eight and one eighth of an inch wide. And what we're going to do is punch on each of these long sides. We'll finish up by doing that. So this side. is what you should have. This is my front cover right here. And all I'm going to do is have two inches of this covering on coming over the front. So I'm just going to kind of look here from the point here or to the edge of whatever punch you're using. And once I have that, I'm going to hold that with my hand. And I'm going to make sure my album is straight like this. What I'm going to do now is a soft crease or a pinch at the corner. Here. You can just bring it and pinch it. Then I'm going to rub my hand smooth. Once I got that pinch there, I'm going to rub my hand smooth, making sure this is straight, all the way to the back. And then I'm going to pinch it where that corner is, just like that. You will end up having two crease marks. Now, you, you're, all you're going to want to do is softly and don't crease down. But to help the to keep it straight, you're just going to do a soft, like so. And over here softly, not pushing all the way down, so that that will help you keep straight when you're wrapping this around. Okay, let's do our score tape. Score tape is pretty easy. All we need to do is, and do not get it on your crease, we are just going to go around like a picture frame here in the first panel. We're going to do that back here on that panel. Do not place it on this. We do use our glue for that. Um, in the middle, we're just going to do the same thing. And um, then what we can do is uh, run one piece of score tape down the middle and then we can use our glue to uh, fill it in for the rest. And I'll show you what that looks like. I have not applied my glue yet. Um, I will when I get ready to do this, but one thing you can do is put a little bit of glue right here to save on some score tape. It's safe to do it. 
<clears throat> so let's go ahead and before I take my score tape off, I'm going to show you what we're actually going to be doing. You're going to want to hold your album like so. And I'm going to flip it around when I'm doing it and turn the album so you can see. Uh, sometimes when I do that, I do get a little crooked, but then I can even it up later um, with uh, my lace or trim or whatever. But here we go. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to leave the score tape on the back and the middle. The only score tape that I will be removing is this front that goes on the front of the cover and I like to start with the front of the cover. So I will just slide that right around the back and I'm going to use my hand to make sure that the spine stays still. And one thing about this is that this is a four inch rather than three and a half inch and if you have small hands it's kind of hard to keep this album straight so I'm just going to hold it back here and rest my arm. Try and keep it. But once that adhes adhesive is off that score tape, I'm going to come in in the middle and I'm going to push it right there and once in the middle. And once that tacks down, then it's easier to smooth up and smooth down. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to remove my score tape and I am going to put a little bit of glue there just because it is safe to do it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get my album out here, position it, the back of the album, and I'm going to hold it. I'm going to rest my arm on top of this album and I'm pushing down so that it doesn't get away from me and I'm going to smooth it here. Now I'm going to come in and push in the middle there and it has tacked and caught right here. So now I'm going to flip the album. I pushed right here. Now I'm just going to smooth this out. Okay, that's it. That's all there is. So now that I have that done, and if you get a little bit of overage like I did, because of course I, I do do that sometimes when I pick up an album, it gets off. But anyway, uh, you can trim this, and I'll show you how to trim any overage because it's so easy to do. Okay, uh, once you have it like that, just pull your album over like so. Let's remove score tape. I am going to put some glue down here as soon as I get this off to help it. Okay. And you can remove this back panel too, and I'll get my glue on there. Usually the spine and the last piece, you can take it all off at once. Okay, I'm going to stand this back up and you're going to do the same thing as try to hold this open like so. Now with the palm of your hand, go in the middle and smooth it around that corner. Okay. Once you do that, you can kind of push it down here and here. Now I'm going to bring this up. You're going to keep it like this, but I am going to flip the album and show you again. You are going to come around with your palm in the middle for the back side and do like we just did for this, but I'm going to flip this and try. So you will be bringing your palm around and smoothing it out. Okay. <clears throat> Before we do any trimming or anything like that, let's take a moment to make sure our score tape's down and not only that, we are going to split our album like so. You're not going to hurt it. And if you have this, which it happens a lot, you're going to put your two nails together right there and you're going to straighten this out. And you're pushing down on that score tape to get it 
to press down. Okay. I'm going to do it over here. And your album will want to slide. And that way you get your score tape down. Now, open it back up. You're not going to hurt anything. And you can fix that. And it looks good. Okay, for the overhang, open your album up like so. Get yourself a mat. Make sure you have a strong blade or a very sharp blade. And all you're going to do is carefully, without cutting into your cardstock, is trim off any excess. And you'll want to take your time with that so you do not cut your album. And you'll just do a little quick trim, little by little, watching what you do. Okay. <clears throat> this is my cover. And I'm just going to open it up so I'm working on my cover here. If you haven't painted uh, your frame, you'll want to do so and let that dry. Um, I am using this. And what I'm going to do is center this so that I have two of these to wrap around the back side. So I am just going to cut it on either side. I'm going to apply glue and I'm going to position that just like that so this still sticks out. And then for this I'm going to apply glue back here and I'm going to wrap it around to the spine. So let's go ahead and do that and I am going to use a white glue. It takes a moment for it to uh, dry and to hold on to fabric but once it's down it's down and I am going to use binder clips to help keep that in place. So let's go ahead and get our lace down. Now for wrapping around the edges here um, because it does take a moment if you what I did was I applied the white glue behind here and then I just put a little dot of hot glue under there to help keep it tacked down um, while that dries. You definitely want to be careful with something like this using hot glue because it can seep through and you can see it. The next thing that we're going to do is cut a piece of pearl trim and we are going to glue that right on down here so you can still see your pretty punch. So let's go ahead and glue that down. While that's drying, and I move my clamps over to help hold that down while that glues, I'm going to cut a piece of the 1 and 3 quarters Venice lace. I am going to trim off any threads, and I'm going to glue that down right here, and I'll show you what mine looks like in a moment. You do not have to be real persnickety about how far you come up. I just came up a little bit there. In a moment we'll start preparing our flowers and uh, I will show you how I achieved these um, flowers with just that dye, the berry blossoms dye, um, these roses. Once this has dried, and I don't, I don't know if mine is completely dry yet. We're going to cut a piece of bling that is going to fit from the top to the bottom, and we're going to glue that right on down, right there. I did clamp mine so it stays straight and gives it an opportunity to dry. Okay, so let's get our sentiment, our wedding. All I'm going to do is apply glue to the back of this, making sure it doesn't squirt out anywhere, and I'm going to center this over. Get my placement here straight. Once I've done that, I can go ahead 
And even though it's not completely down, I can at least cut around this to get it to fit, get this excess away. straight and that's good for me this is going to get glued down right like this so let's go ahead and apply our glue now and allow this time to dry While that's drying, you can get a couple flat back pearls, and I'll show you what I'm using. I am, and I'm going to use my white glue. I'm going to stick one right up here. Whoops, well I was. Now you can use white or ivory or whatever it is. I'm actually going to use white, uh, an ivory one. I'm going to Put some glue on that and that is going to have to dry and then I'm going to grab a smaller one. Whoa! I am losing everything. And then I'm going to grab a smaller one as I was trying to say and just stick that right down there at the bottom. Now it's going to take time and I'm going to allow that at least a good 10 minutes or so to uh, dry. In the meantime, I'm going to get out a few flat back pearls here. And these are just the small little domed ones. Apply a little glue. Stick one there. some glue to this one and just stick that right there and then this one goes right there and that's going to need some drying time I'm going to grab three more flat back pearls and it's the same one I used up here and they are the ivory so they really stick out next to the white. And again, drying time is needed. Now we're going to make this butterfly and all we're, I'm using is this Martha Stewart punch. Now mine's old and um, I've used it time and time again. So I just did that on white cardstock and all I'm going to do is take my diamond stickles and I'm going to squirt some on here and we're definitely going to need to uh, wash our hands after this and I just applied a little bit of the diamond on there then I took the silver stickles and I went around some of the edges here. And I'm going to allow this to dry. Now once it's dry, we're going to stick that right up here and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the middle of them. And I'm going to place them right here. Now for the flowers, let's while this is all drying, let's work on our flowers uh, if you're die cutting them. 
Um, also, uh, if you notice, this is the um, the vine with the leaves and the berries. Now I treated the berries like they were leaves. And um, you're going to want, um, just let's just get started. Uh, die cut two of these, and we'll use the other one. Um, I found I was able to double up my white cardstock, and I'm just using from my scraps, these scraps that are in our thing. And I'll show you how I ink, uh, ink that to get that effect. And then for the die plates here, um, let's start off by, by die cutting at least eight sets of each one of these. And again, I was able to save time and double up and run it through. Uh, check to see if yours will do it. I'm using a, a big shot, but uh, let's go ahead and do that. So you'll want eight sets. If you're doubling up, you'll only have to run it through four times. Uh, really quick for the butterfly. Cut three pieces of, if you're using this, cut three of your uh, blings off and let's glue that down to the middle. Let's start off with this piece. <clears throat> now, I realize these are supposed to be berries here, but I inked them up like they were uh, leaves. So um, you will see some lines in here where you can just kind of sniff to uh, separate some of these pieces here. And I'm just going to go right on in and snip to release. Okay, so all I used first was the pistachio. And this is so simple to do. I went around the edges of this with and some of this is going to get uh, covered. But I went around the edges of all of this dark, just like that. This is that. what yours should look like. Now what I did was I went in from the tip there and just put some darker right in through here. Now with the leftover ink, I lightly went over this, like this. So this is what you would have. I did darken up these little squirrely things and in through here. Next, grab your memento tart, the pear tart. And this is where I just lightly brushed some extra color to um, fill in, and I'm just going over the, the lighter parts. We're going to grab our Wincastella, and we're going to cover our leaves and everything. After it's dry, as you can see, this one's a little more defined than this one. If you got this result, perfect. If you got this one, perfect again. They're both reusable and they both look good. For the roses that um, I made, you will want your metallic ink pad and you will want a spritzer and of course we're going to leave some white and you will want your silver stickles and your diamond stickles for this and then you'll have glossy accents uh, to top it off once it's all dried. So the first thing is let's make this one, the larger one. You're going to want to grab three of your largest petals, flip them on over. You're going to then go to your medium size, grab two, and then you are going to grab one of your smaller ones. Actually, you can grab, there's one size down before the smallest, and let's grab that too. So, once you have that, you're going to want a water spritzer for this, and you're just going to spray them a little. And then you're going to blot. Okay. 
I am using the Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit. It does have a ton of tools in here that I like to use. Uh, they do make a smaller kit, and I think it has three and uh, the shaping tool and a smaller, I, I think the mat is half this size. Um, all I'm going to do is grab a couple tips here. Whoops, and they just kind of slide right in. Let's start with the larger one. And you're just going to rub this around or press down and around. If you want to make a circle, you can. I've got mine done. Once you do that, let's pop them on over. I'm going to use the smaller size here, and all I'm going to do is just press down in the middle. We're going to, I'm going to move these on over now so I don't get any glue on my thing here. For me, it's easiest to use hot glue. I am using a low temp, so I do not blister myself. And we're going to start with the smallest one. All I'm going to do is place a little glue in the center, and then I'm just going to pinch it like this. Pinch it together. And my fingers are all icky right now, but that's it. We're going to grab our next size, and all we do here is put a little glue at the bottom of this and stick it right in the middle. Give that a moment to dry. Now, you're just going to put a little dab right on the inside of that, and you're going to pull it up. You're going to do this for each one of these. You don't want to get a big glob in there. You're going to hold it until it's uh, dried. I did then pull out these, kind of curl them back with my finger. And once I did that, you can see where our rose is starting to form. I'm going to grab the next size. I'm going to add a little glue to the bottom of this. And I'm going to stick that right in the center. Whoops. I'm going to peel these back so I can get down in the crease there with my hot glue. And I'm going to dab a little right in there. And I'm going to pull it up and hold it for a moment. These, uh, this dye, uh, the flower dye I'm using, is perfect for roses and pull it up. Again, hold that till it's done. And get this last one. Okay, I'm going to add a little glue and I'm just going to repeat that and I'm going to go to this next size. Whoops. got an extra petal in there. I'm not sure. It makes no difference. Okay, I'm just going to pull these down so I can get right on in there. If your um, paper is still damp, sometimes the hot glue will not adhere. And the reason why I use the hot glue is because it's quicker uh, drying time than the regular glue. Got to be careful with it. Okay, I'm going to go after this one. I already started. Now, one of these, set these off to the side for a moment. Pull these back down under so I can get under there. If you get a little um, 
glue residue sticking out, don't worry about it. Chances are, when we're done, you will not be able to notice it. So far, this is what we have. We can just lay that right on down. Now for this one, what I did was to give this a bigger uh, effect is I snipped off so that I have two and a three petal. And that's because I am going to place this right there. And I'm just going to drag some glue. And I'm going to do the same to make this just a little bit bigger. I think I got an extra bit here. All I did with this is put the diamond stickles all over it. And then I rubbed it in with my fingers. We're going to do the same thing um, we just did and create our other flowers. This one, um, I'm using four petals. And um, all I did with this to start is grab my silver, where is it? Right here. My silver ink, and I just lightly dabbed around the edges. Not real dark, you don't need to. And you're gonna do this with all of these petals real lightly, both sides. So I'm gonna do this really quickly. If you're bored to tears, fast forward. And the last one, you can leave alone. Now, to get the sparkly effect, I did use a little bit of the diamond on here. To get the smaller ones, like this, this one, all I did was pull uh, two of the, I had up a small, two of those made this, same thing that we've been doing. And for this one, you're just going to uh, do like that. Let's go ahead and start gluing um, our pieces down. I am uh, using this first. We need this piece out of our paper house and it is adhesive and we are going to remove this but I forgot to tell you in order to make this stiffer, in the very back of your paper pad, remove this uh, light chipboard piece. Shame on me. Um, I do need to wash my hands. I'm gonna, just going to remove that adhesive, but I don't really trust a lot of the adhesives. I am going to use a little glue here to make sure this does stay down and don't peel back up. And I'm just going to place this right on this to glue it down. And then I'm going to cut out and around. And that way it stiffens this up so that it doesn't bend very easy. So let's go ahead and cut around that. Now I just used my craft knife right in here to get that. But all we're going to do is place that right at an angle. And I am going to use hot glue. Just like that. Now let's grab our flower and glue that down. Let's grab our silver. Let's grab a white. This is real simple. Right there. Let's grab 
this one. The smallest white I put right down here. The little gray one is right there. Make a bow with one of your ribbons, apply some glue, and stick that right like that. And then we're going to stick a flat back pearl right there. We have one more butterfly before we finish up, and that just gets placed right like that. Uh, the dritz, we will do that last. So let's allow all this to dry and then we're going to move on to the spine. One thing I forgot is, and it's completely optional, and at this point you would add it, is the baby's breath just by snipping off pieces and tucking some in um, underneath some of the flowers. On the back of your album, we are going to do the spine, but you are going to cut another piece and line it up so that when this flips over, if you're using the same as me, um, it's going to be the same as coming across here lining up. So I am going to glue this down and wrap that around, and I am going to put my flat back Per, uh, my trim uh, pearl and my rhinestones down like I did on the cover. And then you can also place your pearls in the back too to match it up. So let's do that. And once you are done with that, we are going to spread out. You'll make sure that uh, you are um, completely dry at that point. Um, so that when it hangs over is what I'm talking about. Then we can go ahead and get our middle piece for here. Grab this one and your Tim Holtz metal frame. We are going to peel off the back adhesive. Grab a piece of scrap white cardstock and I am going to glue this down just to make sure it stays. I'm just going to bring that up. We do have to cut this, so we are going to place this so you can see two hands, one heart, and then we're going to cut around that, so just going to add some glue here. And now all I'm going to do is cut around. And once I have that where I want, I'm going to glue that down right here. And I am going to use this glue. Dot that around there. And I'm going to allow that time to dry. If you're finding that your material pops up the frame and it's not getting down, you can just hold it down for a few moments until it grabs. Now, once yours is glued down, I'm using another bow and I'm going to use hot glue and I'm just going to glue that down right there. And I am going to top that with a flat back pearl right in the middle. We're going to allow this time to dry. 
then we're going to move in to the inside of our album. Before we get into the inside, um, I am actually experimenting with this tutorial. Uh, there is no original that I'm copying off. Um, people who have taken my tutorials before know I usually make an original album. And then when I'm filming, I'm actually filming the making of it with you. Um, in order to cut costs and time, because it takes hours upon hours making the original and then filming the remake of it, I thought I would experiment and try uh, just making the original um, right along with you here and um, I don't think you're going to notice any difference because I already have this all mapped out in my head what I wanted to do. So uh, we will be placing the dritz last, um, the closure, the metal closure, the hook and eye, and um, we'll be adding a couple more things at the end of the tutorial. Okay, our inner sheets of our album this should be seven and a quarter inches wide, and it's going to be seven and a half inches tall. So what we are going to do is, and this is the page I have. It is one of the double-sided ones on the back. It looks like this. Measure over seven inches and cut that. Put the right-hand side in our reserves. Now let's measure over seven and a quarter inches and cut that. We're going to give ourselves some wiggle room when we do place our papers down to our white cardstock. I want to show you what I'm talking about. Now because this is all white, and I say this when I'm using all black cardstock, you're going to want to place something behind here that um, allows you to see uh, the pages behind. It's so easy to place a paper as we go on, and this is just a tip, I'm using that cutout sheet. So now you can actually see the edges better. We cut this at seven inch wide and seven and a quarter tall. So when we lay our pages, this one is for the cover, but I want you to see, when we lay this, when I say it's gonna give us some wiggle room, we're gonna have a beautiful white frame around each page. And remember how I said you'll understand why I wrapped with white first? It's because it's all going to go blend. So when we do eventually mount this here, it's going to blend and we will be able to have white border around. And it, it just seems to flow a little better. You don't have to do it like that. But that's just my idea. So we want to keep this straight since we aren't the same. Um, when we're doing our page, you definitely don't want to get turned around because then we're going to be too wide. That's just a tip before we get now, started. Now, I've been so antsy about getting to use this, and you'll see how beautiful it comes out. Let's grab two of the pieces out. We can set that to the side. Let's get some white cardstock out. And we are going to die cut this. We're just going to place our blades down. And you can trim your, your paper uh, down for this and then run it through. Uh, a lot of people, they only have a six inch wide uh, platform on their die cutting machine. So you can trim that on down. And all we're going to do is run that through the die cutter. Look how gorgeous that is. And it even embosses. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, set this off to the side. I am using a cutting um, that's from my scraps. If you were six inches um, this way, you're fine to use it. The main concern is making sure that if you were to place this down, that you have tabs that we can wrap around the back. So you're going to want some overhang on each side. Let's get our regal borders die out. Excuse my ugly tape. I do use it. It's time to replace it. It keeps my die plate in place when I um, run this through the die cutter. All you're going to do is place this at the top and what you are going to be doing is making sure you are even from here 
to here and from here to here and most importantly from here up on each side and that's why I use tape to keep this down the next thing is, is I'm going to use this one I do need to clean mine out I love this it's just elegant and it's beautiful and you're just gonna run that on through the die cutter also um, if you're new to die cutting or even if you have not seen these Spellbinder makes these tools and um, and also you can take it apart and there's a, another deal with it but you run this when the stuff is there if, if you go like this you can see already these small little ones are popping out but it helps get almost all uh, of them out uh, off the back to release it so in the ones that are really stuck you just use your little poker tool um, this is an awesome tool if you don't have it another thing that this tool is good for is poking through these small little holes that don't fall out and here's the plate if I go like this I'm, they're just gonna all just fly off there so now what I'm going to do is um, because I want a straight line to release this top flap I usually put this on my paper cutter and I just line it up and cut from the side in on each side keeping myself straight so let's do that what you're going to do now is from the top of your die to the bottom of your page you're going to measure over five and seven eighths of an inch and make a little pencil mark then you're going to trim it to that five and seven eighths of an inch that's just a hair below six inches once you've done that let's grab our score tape and I'm going to double check myself I should only be seven inches wide and I am and I'm going to place a piece of score tape right down at the bottom of this and you're going to make sure you press down pretty good there I'm going to remove my score tape backing and I am going to center this and I'm watching to see how much on each side there is that's what's going to keep me centered and I'm going to bring this all the way down to the bottom of my page and then I'm going to press really good there now sometimes I just kind of go like this to give it a little extra room so it's not so tight too and I'm going to fold back these flaps back behind now me um, I like to do quick tacking I'm not globbing on this glue hot glue I'm just doing it uh, because it's a convenient thing I'm just going to put a little glue whoops down there um, if you are going to be using a hot glue gun um, you probably want to get yourself a low temp now the hot glue gun is not to glue down your front uh, pretty panels or any of the decorative papers all I'm using that for is quick tacking of these tabs back behind and I'm also will use it for behind maybe some of my roses so it's a quick tack down in your reserves you should find this piece looks like that if you lay this down, it should fit, if you bring it down to the bottom, should fit your piece here. And we do have some lays to go across. Let's go ahead and use our glue and place that down. I need to unclog mine. I left my pin out. You don't need a whole lot of this glue. And I'll show you. I'm just putting a thin line and with the tip it controls so you're not getting a big glob that's going to warp or do anything to your paper I'm just kind of going like that and then just scribbling a little bit and I'm gonna place it Oops. The nice thing about this glue is that if you do get some squirting out the side or up here, you can just wipe it off. Um, it does not leave any greasy or residue. And that's what I really love about this glue. Okay, I am using the two inch 
beaded sequin trim and all I'm going to do is cut this to what looks nice and to me cut a little off this side and this side and then I can trim off any overhang there and I'm probably going to place it just like this with the things down when I'm done gluing it down I'm going to uh, trim up anything there so I am going to use my white glue just in case there is some seeping I think I'll apply it to this first and I'm gonna have to let this dry so let's do that and then we will place it I am going to slip something back behind here just to make sure that I do not get any glue seeping through this dye. Just slip that right on back behind to protect my paper. Okay, here we go. In your uh, paper house and wedding embellishment pack, you will find this bell. And um, I'm actually just going to use this. Uh, whatever light chipboard I can find is going to work. And I'm just going to remove that adhesive backing. I am going to apply a little glue. I must have touched my face because I just got a smudge on the back of this. And my makeup is probably coming off. So I'm just going to plant that right on down there. And then I'm going to cut it out and around that. And I'm first going to wash my hands. I've got mine uh, ready to go here. Place that back behind. I'm just going to glue that right like that. And I do have to allow this to dry especially with the sequins and stuff. If you run into a sequin that just is making it impossible for you to be able to get that down, just snip it off. This is where we're at. Let's set this off to the side to dry and we're going to work on our folding fold out. Cut a piece of white cardstock that is seven inches by seven and a quarter inches. Okay, grab your scoring board and I'm going to use a pencil with mine. Uh, your first, for my second measurement anyway, we're going to score two lines. The first one we're going to do at a half inch and remember we're seven inches across. Okay, half inch is our first score line, and then you're going to want to measure over to 11 sixteenths, right about there. And you are going to, I gotta move mine over, and you are going to score your next one. Now, if you have to use pencil like me on some of this, um, just erase it. Cindy, uh, she takes my tutorials and she sent me a link for the lady who created that score pal and I guess it explains um, it explains how to get an eighth and, and all that without using a ruler for the notches that aren't there. So I have still yet to check that out. Thank you Cindy for sending me that link. I definitely need to go check that out. So let's go ahead and uh, fold on our score lines. Now with our flaps off to the left, let's go ahead and tuck them all back behind. Now in your reserves, you will find this piece here, a second piece. If you were to place that you will notice it will give us a nice little white border top bottom, but we're too short. Um, in that case, whenever I come up against something like that, 
I'm going to show you a trick to add on so you don't have to cut a fresh sheet. I am going to take this out of my reserves and all I'm going to do is run a piece of score tape because we do have a little pocket here and I think it comes down to about there. And I try to keep that score tape um, as straight as possible on the edge. So then I just lay this right like this as straight as I can. I can always even that up on when I go to trim this. Now let's start with trimming. Let's go ahead and cut this excess off keeping even with that. Now let's measure over six and one eighth of an inch and cut it. Let's see if we fit. Now that's a little trick that I use sometimes and you should be able to fit to where you're not hanging over the edge. If you have to trim a little bit off this, go right on ahead. We need to do our side pocket. Let's grab a piece of cardstock and this is eight and a half inches so I do know that if I was to die cut on this um, there are going to be enough room to have flaps to go around this little side pocket. So what we're going to do is just center that and do the same thing we did before, making sure that it's all even. And we're just going to run that right through the die cutter, cutter like that. And if you need to cut your sheet down, go on ahead. This isn't going to be a real wide uh, thing, so if you were to cut it from here down to trim it to get through your machine, that would be just fine. From the tip, uh, measure over four inches and cut that. Let's go ahead and lay some score tape here and press that down really good. As soon as we're done with this panel here, um, I am going to poke through mine before I lay it, but all we're going to do is center that and press it down and wrap our flaps around the back and tack it down. Now with your flaps off to the left, go ahead and tuck those all the way back behind. Let's apply glue to the back of this and we are going to mount this, making sure we are the same um, top and bottom with that white spacing. Make sure our page is down good. Now, remember the trimmings off our spine cover, that peacock white? Grab that and just line it up with the top of your pocket and move it over to the left to make sure that you are even there. Take your pencil and all you're going to do is mark where you need to trim. So let's do that. Then all we're going to do is apply glue and we're going to mount that over the pocket. Grab this out of your pack we do not need to mount this to anything. Get that backing off there. I am going to apply my glue, make sure this puppy stays. A lot of times these adhesives just don't want to, to stay. And all I'm going to do is put that right there. It should fit right in there. Now this is where we're going to want to use a little chipboard and I'm just going to take this off the adhesive. I'm going to use this. And I'm, this is a very easy cutout. Let's cut around that. We're just going to glue that down right like that. So this is where you will want a piece of scrap cardstock, whatever you have handy there. I'm going to slip that in there, and I'm only going to put glue on one side of this. Well, I better get over there too because you just never know. And we're just going to plant that right like that. Now, I am going to lift to make sure that 
that glue does not stick. And I will keep moving it. Now let's go ahead and make a um, hand tied little Once bow. Once you get that, let's glue that down right there. You're not going to want to put a flat back pearl in the center of this because we do have another fold out that comes over. We're going to go ahead and attach this even though we still have this to do. We can do that. Um, all you want to do is what I usually do is do this and you still have um, a score you can still see and then your outer score is here. You're just going to slide that right in there. And you're just going to line that up because this is the same. And once you have it where it is even, top to bottom, you are going to pinch it and you're going to hold it. If you feel it slip, start over. Once you have it there, keep holding it down. And this is why I use a little hot glue because it's quicker. And then you're just going to tack that down. <clears throat> and then you can push it back. And you should be squared. Cut a piece of cardstock that is six inches by seven and a quarter inches. We are six inches wide. Score at a half inch. Whoops, mine moved half inch and three quarters of an inch. And let's fold on our score lines. If you notice, this is going to fit nicely and it will also accommodate our little spacing here. It's going to accommodate the thickness of this. So let's go ahead and fold in. Our flaps are off to the right. Let's go ahead and fold in underneath. Tuck them all back behind there. In your reserves, you will find this. And you will notice that it's going to be short. 